Well, I don the best I can. I want my crown. Yes, I've done the best I can. I want my crown. Mais j'attends de revoir Kevin Coyne. Ça fait très longtemps que je n'ai pas vu. Je ne sais plus exactement. La première fois que je l'avais vu, c'était à la Pergola, à Codéran. Et c'est un des concerts qui m'avait le plus marqué, de tous ceux que j'ai vus. Et puis j'ai dû le voir il y a quelques années, mais je ne me rappelle plus exactement dans quelles circonstances. Voilà, donc euh, je ne raterai jamais un concert de Kevin Coyne à Bordeaux. Kevin Coyne, j'écoute ses disques depuis longtemps et euh, j'adore ce qu'il fait. Quoi. Bon, euh, il se trouve que je l'ai vu la dernière fois il y a plus de 20 ans. Et euh, donc là, j'avais très envie, euh, j'ai pu me libérer pour, le, pour venir le voir. La dernière fois qu'il est passé à Bordeaux, je travaillais et malheureusement, je n'ai pas pu y aller. In France, here, where I'm playing tonight, it's, uh, they don't always understand the text, but there's always a very emotional response. They like uh, to tragedy, to comedy, to a sense of the ridiculous. They're very good at that. Per the best in Europe, I think, audiences at responding to feeling. The language barrier doesn't really work in the case of Kevin Waller. Some, first of all, some uh, members of the audience still understand, I mean, understand English. Uh, enough to uh, follow uh, what Kevin means and uh, the humor that is uh, his particular kind of humor. And uh, more than that, I think that it's so visual too, and uh, the feeling, they can understand it, can feel what he was expressing too. I've done the best I can, I want, I want my crown. Yes, I've done the best, the best I can, I want my crown. Everybody knows they know that I have get some get up and go done the best I, I can I, I want my crown. I was always a painter. I started. Uh, uh, I was at art school in Derby for four years and uh, took uh, examinations and I did it all properly. So therefore, I suppose I was a painter first. But I mean. I was into music very early on too because my brother and both my brother and sister are musicians. My brother is dead now as a jazz musician and uh, introduced me to a lot of uh, rather more sophisticated music at a very young age. So I was singing on stages from a very early age from I was in rock bands in the 50s so uh, I was doing that but I was also I uh, wanted to be a painter and wanted to draw and I've managed to do both really. I'm not so uh, obsessed with trying to uh, paint things as they really are. I want to, uh, it sounds pretentious, but I just want to paint what's inside my head, really, and find uh, a simple and a simplistic way. It's more simplistic as, as the years go by. I'm always intrigued by the darker side of life, as, as you noted. It's not always easy to talk about your work, really. I'm not always sure whether I like it very much, but, uh, you know, that's normal, I think, if you're honest. Uh, this, which is rather strange. I did a whole series about Caspar uh, uh, Hauser, uh, the, the was it the 19th century guy who was found in Nuremberg and, and was... Uh, Uh, eventually murdered, uh, I think, in Ansbach. But it's a story, local story, really, to Franconia and to Bayern. So I did an exhibition about this guy. I'm very much of a kind of a loner in a very public situation, you know. I'm, uh, I think my job as a, as a singer and a performer 
requires me to meet a lot of people and often to be in a group of large, a large group of people, but I often feel extremely alone and uh, I, that's just my temperament, I guess. But my work isn't always sad and gloomy. I mean, I have a, I suppose some would say a rather perverse sense of humour, but I, I find li life rather hard, I think, a lot of the time, but that's, that doesn't make me alone. I mean, <laughs> millions of people find it the same way. Since I moved here to Nuremberg, I, I have been rather an outsider in some respects and I rather enjoyed it and painting and starting to paint again uh, coincided with that feeling of uh, finding myself again as I really am and not this uh, party being that I used to be, you know, always drinking at the bar. And uh, I stopped drinking ten years ago. This has a lot to do with the way I feel now. Any artist who's uh, really honest would say that the, the art they do, whether it's painting or music or, or whatever, or dance or something, would say it is partly therapy. I mean, if you really do it well, you're getting something out from inside and uh, it's very necessary for me to uh, explain myself to myself regularly. So, I mean, with painting, I, I, I treat it very much in a professional way. Uh, in the sense that I do it every, as often as possible, almost every day, a, a drawing. Uh, I have to do it, really. I, uh, what else can I do? It's what I do. Everybody knows they know That I've got some get up and go Done the best I, I can I, I on my crown Put it on my head My big, big head Daddy's up in heaven uh, And he surely did Mommy's got her crown She'll send it right down On a big pink cloud With a voice so loud With little white hands I think my mama understands That I've done my best That I've done my best If you're not necessarily aiming to sell a product if you're not making something which is has a market which is being created by commerce by money uh, you you know if you're not pleasing this audience you know obviously then you're gonna have some troubles you know you, you're going to be isolated you know your mark or well, my market will I believe continue forever you know because people will Long after the Madonnas are forgotten, I believe that the, somebody will say, oh, yeah, Kevin Coyne did that, you know. And I've, I've done many things which are later have become sort of commercial things. I mean, in many ways, I was one of the first punks, really. I mean, I did uh, songs which later, uh, and the, the spirit and power and enthusiasm behind them was picked up by the, the punks, by John Lydon and people... Uh, Malcolm McLaren said that not long ago on an MTV interview, you know, that I was one of the influences of that period. So something comes of it, even if I didn't get all the money, you know. And what would I do with all the money anyway? I think for a very commercially orientated uh, record label, I am difficult because uh, uh, if you're not careful, you get drawn into being something which you're not, you know, dressing in a way which is not necessarily the way you want to dress, and uh, writing lyrics for an imagined audience which uh, uh, doesn't nat naturally reflect the way you really feel. And uh, I've, I mean, I, I, as I said earlier, I do these things to reflect the way I really feel. I mean, I want to... It's like therapy for me uh, to some extent. And if I don't get this uh, uh, input or uh, output or whatever or buzz from it, and then I'm, uh, you know, it's a waste of time for me. Rock and roll is rebel music, you know, it's, it's rebel music and it should, uh, not consciously always, but it should reflect, uh, you know, a lively mind and a, 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 there should be a touch of anarchy or a lot of anarchy in there and all the best popular music. It's not classical music, it's not... Uh, folk music, it's a very special kind of music which requires a very special kind of anger and a very special kind of honesty. Mm -hmm.